On the stopper on the string, you'll see the stopper, but you should also notice there is a black spot that I've put on the string. So here I am, spinning the stopper on the string. First question is this. Emma, which one has the greater angular velocity, the stopper on the string or the black spot on the string? Which one has a greater angular velocity? Um, the stopper. The stopper. Why is it that the stopper has the larger angular velocity, Emma? Because it's going for it. has a bigger displacement. Ah, it's a bigger displacement. Grimmer. Isn't that a tangential velocity? Gotta be careful to identify the difference between tangential velocity and angular velocity. So who can answer the question? Which one has the larger angular velocity? The stopper or the black spot? Um, Andrew? Um, they are the same. They are the same. Notice they both go through the same angle in the same amount of time. What is then the difference between the stopper on the string and the black spot? Because something is different. What is different? Cosine. The radius. Therefore the what? I, therefore what? I agree the radius is different, therefore what is different? It's not the angular velocity, con um, Connie? The arc length. Uh, I agree with that, but in terms of velocity, yes, the arc length is different. Meredith? The tangential, the tangential velocity. So notice, because the radius is greater for the stopper on the string, the arc length is greater, therefore the tangential velocity is greater for the stopper on the string. But because they're both moving through the same angle in the same amount of time, they both have the same angular velocity. So it's important to notice the difference between the angular velocity and the tangential velocity. Now, completely different question. Assuming I am moving this whole thing at a constant angular velocity, what do we then know about, um, Andy, about the angular acceleration, fishy thing, if I'm moving at a constant angular velocity? Um, it's going to be uniform. Uh, it's not a, about whether they be, it's U fishy M or not. I'm moving at a constant angular velocity. Who can tell me what we know then about the angular acceleration? Wicked. Zero. It's zero. I'm gonna, don't worry, I'm going to write all this down on the, on the board in a minute. So we know because the angular velocity is constant, delta omega is zero. Therefore, the fishy thing, angular acceleration, is equal to zero. If we know the angular acceleration is equal to zero, what do we know about the tangential acceleration of the stopper on the string? Mitch. Um, it's also zero. It is also zero. Notice the tangential acceleration is also equal to zero. So, so far, we have the angular velocity is equal to, or is not changing. Therefore, fishy thing, angular acceleration is equal to zero. Therefore, tangential acceleration is equal to zero. Okay, slightly different line of questioning. Joshua, is the t if, the, if we're at a constant angular velocity, is the tangential velocity also constant? No, why not? No, the radius is constant, right? The radius is the same the whole time. So then yes, so he's saying that the tangential velocity of the stopper on the string is constant because the angular velocity of the stopper is constant. And I'm gonna say that that's actually not correct. The tangential velocity is not constant. Who can explain to me why the tangential velocity is not constant even though the angular velocity is constant? Hedler. Velocity is a vector. And? because the direction of the tangential velocity is changing. So notice, even though it's moving at a constant angular velocity, the direction of the tangential velocity is changing, therefore the tangential velocity is not constant. The magnitude of the tangential velocity is constant, but the direction is not. Okay, if the tangential velocity is changing, what must we have? Who can answer that one? If the tangential velocity is not constant. Andy. No, we've already said that the tangential acceleration is equal to zero. Have force. 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 Uh, I agree with that. There must be a net force, and therefore there must be some sort of acceleration. We've already shown that the angular acceleration is equal to zero, and the tangential acceleration is equal to zero. So there is another form of acceleration. It is called the centripetal acceleration. And I'm going to write all that down on the board, because I know that was a lot. So give me a moment.
So we have, first off, the angular velocity is constant. It does not change. Therefore, the angular acceleration, which is equal to the change in angular velocity over change in time, is equal to zero, which means the angular acceleration is equal to zero. The tangential acceleration, which is equal to r times alpha, is also equal to zero. Therefore, we've shown that the angular acceleration and the tangential acceleration are both equal to zero. The tangential velocity, the magnitude, is constant. However, the direction is changing. Therefore, the tangential velocity is not constant. Therefore, there must be a linear acceleration. We've already shown that that is not the tangential acceleration. It clearly is also not the angular acceleration. That acceleration is called the centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration. Class, please say centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration. Okay, we'll just concentrate on centripetal. Please say centripetal. Centripetal. Tangential. Tangential. Centripetal, tangential, centripetal, tangential. Nice, very nice. Notice that these are slightly difficult words. We will say them often. Centripetal acceleration is, the word centripetal means center, center seeking. Because the centripetal acceleration is always inward towards the center of the circle. The centripetal acceleration, always inward towards the center of the circle. And the centripetal acceleration is uh, the acceleration that causes circular motion. The equation for centripetal acceleration is that the centripetal acceleration equals the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. Class, please say, centripetal acceleration equals the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. <laughs> All right, I'll accept it. Okay, tangential velocity we already know is equal to r times omega, the radius times the angular velocity. That whole piece, radius times angular velocity, is squared, so we get the radius squared times the angular velocity squared divided by the radius. The radius cancels out, and we get r times omega squared. So the centripetal acceleration is equal to the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius, but it is also equal to the radius times the angular velocity squared. And that is our box equation. So we technically have two different equations for the centripetal acceleration. It is equal to the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. It is also equal to r times omega squared. Which one we use is just dependent on uh, what we know or what we're trying to find. So again, the centripetal acceleration is the acceleration that causes circular motion. And the reason it exists is because the tangential velocity is not constant when it's moving in a circle because the direction is changing for that tangential velocity.